When we think about transport in the unsaturated zone, it's often we visualize a solute, be it a salt or uh, organic product going with the, with the liquid phase and moving along, and we think this is how things move. And then we often will think about bound particles, things such as some radioactive substances that absorb tightly to the mineral surfaces. Therefore, we don't have to worry too much about the movement of those compounds. There's a special intermediate size class called colloids. And colloids are things which don't dissolve, but can move with the water phase. They can become suspended. And it deserves special attention about how these colloids can actually be active agents of transport in the unsaturated zone. The scale we talk about with colloids, as I mentioned, is things that don't go into solution. So it's certainly larger than a nanometer, but that will stay uh, in, indefinitely in suspension, whereas suspended particles will, will, will settle out. So colloids are these of the size where molecular motion will keep them in suspension indefinitely. And you can see this at the top end of colloid size are bacteria and algae. So uh, midpoint to lower end would be viruses. As we know, viruses can flow through the ocean and flow through water bodies with no apparent settling. So this is the size class we're talking about. And it includes things such as clays that we'll talk about in terms of soil structure. But in this case, we're thinking about particles which may detach, and those may go into the aqueous phase. So fundamentally, what we're going to have is a charged surface, like a, a, a mineral surface. And then at that mineral surface, we'll say that there are bound uh, cations, typically. Typically, those mineral surfaces will be negatively charged. The cations will be positively charged. And a colloidal particle will also often have let's consider a mineral colloid for the moment, it'll have a, a, a negatively charged surface. So it is binding to that uh, cationic uh, kind of layer. And so it's, it's lightly bound, but bound via these cations. Now what can happen is if we, uh, if we have those cations hydrate, then we can get these particles far enough away where the cohesive forces are no longer um, strong enough to hold the colloid in place and it will become mobilized. So we can mobilize the colloids by changing the chemistry of the water um, surrounding the, the, the colloid. This became apparent to us when we were looking specifically at some samples at the Hanford site, which is where most of the, the plutonium for uh, the US weapons program was, was produced. And in these soils, we ran experiments where we took the, the solution that had been used in the production of the plutonium, which is a, high, a five molar sodium nitrate, and we followed it with water. Now you'd think that when you chase a salt with water, you'll certainly get the salt out, but what might come with that salt? And what we found was after about 20 pore volumes, the, the, enough water went through where those, the sodium that was in the solution hydrated and boom, off came a huge pulse of, of, uh, of colloids. So increasing in concentration by an orders of magnitude, suddenly, uh, you know, four orders of magnitude increase in concentration at a critical juncture when that dissociative uh, process had com come to completion. So we could then repeat the cycle, put back in salty water, then repulse it with, with fresh water, and again and again and again, sometimes coming off darker than coffee from this otherwise material that looked like clean sand. So we can look at electron microscope um, pictures of the pre and post treatment material and see that before we treated it, there were all these small, small particles bound to the mineral surfaces. So at the kind of one to 10 micron scale, lots of colloidal particles prior to that freshwater shock. When the freshwater shock came by, it knocks almost all those particles off. So these colloids can generate transport of compounds that otherwise you wouldn't expect to move. So bound uh, uranium, bound plutonium, other uh, bound uh, organic compounds, bound to this, the colloids, which represent a huge fraction of the total surface area of that subsurface material. And yet, though those things should not be mobile in principle, when the salt concentrations change, they can be mobilized. So the idea here is that colloids can play a very important role 
both absorbing compounds but also acting as transport mechanisms should the conditions give rise to their release.